A couple of weeks ago, I decided to uh, get into the weeds on the free will subject. Seemed like a good idea at the time. And I was actually surprised. I guess I never thought of it that much, but I was amazed on how many facets, how many angles, how many discussions, how many arguments uh, were involved in all of this and all this terminology, uh, hard determinism, soft determinism, also called compatibilism, uh, indeterminism, libertarian free will, and even quantum physics uh, becomes part of this discussion as well. On the simplest term, which is, I guess, the way I viewed free will before, when you think about our legal system and how our legal system defines free will, and really it's the difference between somebody who has control of their actions, understands what they, they're doing, and doesn't control. So, for example, the difference between somebody who's speeding, goes through a red light and gets pulled over for reckless driving, uh, or somebody who's driving and they have a seizure, they lose consciousness, they slouch over, they hit the steering wheel, or hit the steering wheel, hit the accelerator and speed through a stop sign. Um, and, the, and the difference, in the one case, somebody knew what they were doing, they were in control. And the other case, obviously, somebody's unconscious, uh, they're, they're not control, in control of what's happening. So when you look at the legal system on the extreme case, they consider somebody unfit for trial. In other words, you bring somebody into the courtroom, they, under, they don't understand the role of the judge, the jury, what they're being charged with, what pleading guilty means, not guilty means. They just have a, they just have a severe extreme uh, mental limitations. And then you have pleas of insanity or temporary insanity, arguing that somebody didn't have control of their actions for numerous reasons, uh, maybe some kind of mental disability or, or mental illness. But in the cases where those situations, that mental illness, uh, this incapable mind, where that doesn't apply, then somebody was rational, of sound mind, they understood what they were doing, they understood the ramifications, and so they were declared to have control of their actions, meaning free will, meaning they can be basically uh, punished, have something happen to them based on the choices that they made. Uh, they had a choice, they understood, they could have done something different, nobody had a gun to their head, they understood what they're doing. Now they're responsible and they can, they can face the consequences. So that's the easy way of looking at this subject of free will. And then there's going down the rabbit hole where you get into uh, all these different terms. Uh, hard determinism is something that kind of bothered me, the idea that there is nothing random in the universe that would make something and determinable, uh, nothing in the human mind where we wouldn't have the capability of occasionally making a decision that wouldn't be uh, predictable, that wouldn't be determin determinable, and also these different scientific experiments uh, that have become available and people analyzing those results and people saying, oh yeah, the results say we don't have free will, while other people are saying, well, not so fast. These are not conclusive uh, conclusions that people are coming to. And here's the results we see when experiments are uh, being done in, in different ways. So let's talk about some of the experiments that have been done. Uh, you've probably heard about the Libet experiment. Let's kind of cover something similar to that first. I want you to watch the clock hand, which mm -hmm. is rotating in this small clock in the center of the screen. Mm -hmm. And then at any time that you choose, when you intend mm -hmm. and will to, mm -hmm. I want you to press either this key or this key. As, as the urge. As the urge takes you. Fine, okay. And then the computer will prompt you to type in the position of the clock hand at which you first felt the conscious will Fine. to press the button. Good. Any questions? 
No. Off we go. It's very funny waiting for the urge, isn't it? So a big issue I had when looking into this ex experiment is exactly what she said. You're telling people to do something when they feel the urge. What does that even mean? And to me, it's kind of like you're studying the decision making of people that don't know what they're doing when you feel the urge. So, um, but these experiments were pretty conclusive in that they picked up something that's since been called the readiness potential this brain activity and the subconscious that happens before the decision was made. And so they come to this conclusion, well, the decision was made before the conscious was aware of the decision. It was all done by the subconscious. But then when they did the experiment in, in different ways, when they said, not when you feel the urge, do something, but look at the screen. And if you see an L, hit the left button. If you see an R, hit the right button then this brain activity, this readiness potential would happen before they made the decision because they hadn't gotten the indicator yet. They hadn't gotten the L or the R to tell them which button to press. So they're pretty inconclusive. Um, there was another experiment that boasted that they can tell, they could predict what people were going to do before they did it. But as it turns out, it was one or two buttons and they were able to predict 60% of the time. Well, if you just flip a coin when you just have two choices, chances are you'll get it right 50% of the time. And if people simply have a tendency, a general tendency to press one button more than the other, then you could easily get that 60%. And that just didn't seem really impressive. And you also have to wonder with these experiments, are these are they biased to get one answer or the other? Are they trying to show that these experiments sh demonstrate that they're no free will? Um, I think when you do get into them, there's some flaws. And, and here's somebody uh, talking about some of the flaws with, with the experiments that have been done. Well, uh, these experiments are thought to show that there is no free will. And, you know, my, my main point here is they don't show that um, for three different reasons, really. These um, judgment times are unreliable, so we don't really know when people first became aware of the urge. Um, and we don't have good evidence that what happens at minus 550 uh, milliseconds, about half a second before the muscle burst, is that a decision is made as opposed to a potential cause of a decision is present. Um, and we don't have evidence that what's happening at half a second before the muscle burst is sufficient uh, for a subsequent muscle burst. So it just leaves free will wide open. Um, another thing, too, is notice what we're studying here. We're studying, you know, relatively trivial actions, uh, wrist flexions or, or mouse button clickings and decisions to do things now. And it may be that you know, free will mainly isn't uh, at work in that dimension of our lives, but mainly is at work in, say, broader dimensions. When And these experiments also get into the conscious versus the subconscious. What's the relationship between those? The conscious, we think of things that are we're aware of, while the subconscious is things that maybe we're not aware of, but still certainly part of who we are. We are the subconscious and the conscious. Subconscious influences the conscious. The conscious influences the subconscious. So just because a decision is made or being prepared to made, be made at the subconscious level, uh, we shouldn't think of that as being completely outside of uh, our minds and outside of being our decision. Something that Labette uh, said as far as his experiment, which uh, he originally concluded that there's no free will. Even if a decision was being made at the subconscious level, where the conscious is now just going on a path and becoming aware of the path, being aware of the decision that was already made, that the conscious would be able to uh, realize the decision and have a veto power, kind of like a boss and a subordinate 
relationship. The subordinate says, here, here's the course of action, and the boss takes a look at it and either accepts it or says, no, this is no good, I want to do something else, in which case the conscious would still have a level of control. So uh, is free will debunked because of these experiments? And based on a research, I certainly don't see that as the case at all. But really, uh, Sam Harris, he's, uh, he believes in hard determinism. He believes that we own, every decision we make could have only been made the way it was made and couldn't have been anything else. Now is his worldview correct? Well, to me, it doesn't make sense because like I said before, that means nothing in a universe and nothing in a human mind uh, doesn't have, nothing has the capability to make such a decision uh, that was random, that was not predictable, that was not determinable. Um, but if, can can that be debunked? And, and the answer is no, we can't debunk the way uh, that Sam Harris has his ideology. But I should also say there's people that are uh, believe in indeterminis, indeterminism, that they are these random events, but these random events still don't mean that there's free will. So think of it this way, in hard determinism, there's just one door. There's a decision you're going to make, you have no choice, it can't be anything different. Well, if you throw indeterminism, then there's multiple doors, maybe there's uh, six possible uh, courses of action, and it's not determinable, determinable what's going to happen, but since you're not aware and don't have control of what that path will be, then there's still no free will. So I would say at this point, nobody can really say anybody's view is debunked. Uh, we'll, start, we'll keep doing these experiments and hopefully do much more sophisticated experiments compared to the ones I've seen. Uh, you have two buttons. When you feel the urge, press one. I mean, that just seems kind of like a hokey pretty shallow experiment. So hopefully we can start doing uh, something far more sophisticated and maybe eventually we'll, uh, we'll get some kind of answer that, to this. Uh, anyway, this is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Cisco, do we have to leave all our good friends now? Only until next time, Pancho. Adios, amigos. <laughs>